así. And we're here um, in the case of State of Florida versus Gavaldi, Gary Pierre, 1838-52, and it's a sanction hearing involving Ms. Nicole Dickerson. Ms. Dickerson, are you here? All right, if you would approach the podium, please. Um, and what I need to do first is um, place you under oath. If you raise your right hand, solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God. I do. Okay, and your full name, ma'am? Nicole Blair Dickerson. And Ms. Dickerson, you're here today appearing in front of our court for this sanction hearing. Um, this was all brought about um, in case 1838-52 on May 31st um, in response to your first motion for extension of time that was granted. We gave you until July 1st. Um, on July 12th, you filed a second motion for extension of time. Um, that was for your answer brief on July 1st. We didn't receive the answer brief at that time. On July 12th, you filed a second motion for extension of time. On July 16th, that motion was denied and you were ordered to serve the brief by July 22nd. Um, you're also order to show cause why you should not be sanctioned for failing to comply with our May 30th order, which gave you the um, July deadline, the July 1st deadline. Um, you didn't respond. And so now we have appeared, uh, we ordered you to appear here um, in our court to explain why you were not responsive to the court's orders. I note previously um, you have been sanctioned by our court in um, State versus Pierre, 18-3852, um, and then also in Solomon versus State, 18-3893. <clears throat> so with that, Ms. Dickerson, um, how would you like to respond? Your Honor, I, I believe I was only sanctioned in a, a case that involved a Teague. Um, yes, I'm sorry, Pierre is this case, and it was Teague, 18-904, um, and Solomon, 183893. Um, in response to uh, this matter, um, <clears throat> first I'll say that um, this appeal, it dealt with a very technical issue that um, was very challenging for me to understand. Uh, when I asked for the first extension with the Office of the Attorney General, I believed that the rules only allowed me to ask for a 30-day extension. Ultimately, it just didn't, it wasn't enough time. I consulted with um, the expert that I had retained on the trial court case, and we eventually became aware of uh, an amicus brief that the ACLU had filed in uh, Mobley versus Georgia. And so I was working to understand more of the issue with Mr. Harris, who was the expert that I hired in the lower court case. Um, and then I also reached out to the ACLU for some help um, in drafting a response to this. It was kind of just dealing with um, getting in touch with the Florida chapter, the appropriate um, members of the ACLU that might be able to help. Um, that was what caused a delay um, and as of now, I have received some help from them, not in the form of an amicus brief, of course, but um, as far as understanding the issue and reviewing um, what they reviewed to understand those issues, that's what took more time um, than I had anticipated. Based on some personal issues, um, I lost my grandmother in the first week of July, um, and then I'm also a mother. I was dealing with some issues with my daughters as well. Um, those were the reasons that I was unable to file the brief uh, in a timely manner in response to the court's order to file it on um, <clears throat> to the court's order of July 16th, I believe it was. Um, I'm not here to necessarily give the court a whole bunch of excuses. I fell short of the court's expectations. I allowed some personal issues in my life to deal with or to uh, interfere with my practice and all I can do is apologize to the court for that inconvenience. And although we appreciate that life comes up um, as you're going through and doing your work, 
but um, the concern is that there was just basically silence. There's no, no communication, no response from you, um, and then you appear here today and you have just a number of excuses, but none of that was ever verbalized. Um, and, you know, silence um, is, is certainly not appropriate to respond to orders to show cause, especially when there's been this pattern of non-responsiveness to your duty as an attorney here with this court and representing the <coughs> clients. So, um, although I appreciate the fact that certainly um, life comes up, um, that doesn't excuse your lack of responsiveness and silence to any order of the court. And like I said, that, that appears to have been a pattern. Um, and that is the concern, and that's the concern as far as the other matters that have been referred to the Florida Bar. So um, uh, anything else to add? Um, I, I will just add after the order of July 26th, I, I just didn't file anything because I believed that the court only wanted to hear from me today. Well, counsel, why, why didn't you uh, respond to the show cause orders? Um, just those family issues that were going on. Um, so those, you said that you, the, the, on the merits, you said that's a complicated issue. It's a one issue appeal, correct? It is. And, and uh, so, but let's take for a moment, let's assume that it, that, that it is a complicated issue. Why is responding to our order to show cause, why is that complicated? It's not complicated. Um, that was just something where I fell short due to those personal issues. Um, it certainly wasn't complicated. Um, in the past, when I have made those responses, I've always wanted to try to have the brief ready to file at around the same time. And at the time, it wasn't ready, so I was trying to work on continuing to get that brief ready. Um, and just, I, I let a lot of things affect not only this case, but other cases as well. Do you, do you see that it, it is not a good strategy to fail to respond to an order to show cause simply because you don't have your brief ready? I absolutely do. Um, counsel, it seems that you not only have a pattern of failing to file briefs, but you have a pattern, not only in this case, but in, in other cases. Um, I was on the Teague panel um, where you appeared before um, you fail to respond to orders to show cause, and you do so regularly. Do you agree with that? Um, no, I believe I've responded. I, I think there was an issue in Mr. Teague where I had not received one of the orders to show cause, but then I did respond timely to all the ones received after that. Okay, anything else? Well, I mean, I wasn't part of the Teague one myself, but uh, this is at least your second time being brought before the court on one of these matters, which certainly is, is not a good thing. Um, regardless of, of what happens on this hearing today, I think going forward, you ought to know that perhaps you're under a bit more of a microscope than other attorneys might be and, and just take that into consideration. I understand, Your Honor. Okay. All right. Thank you. We stand in recess. Thank you.